Hello, Greenham County. I'm Jeremy Perry. I'm Maria Maracy, and welcome back to another episode of GCTV. We've got a lot of exciting news to share with you, and we hope you enjoy. On to Ella Howard on the hot topic of the back-to-back -back World Champion Cheerleaders. Hi, I'm Ella, and today we have a very special story on the long legacy of Greenup County Cheer in their new World Championship. The team, in which I am a part of, has just competed at the NHSCC down in Orlando, Florida in February, and they made it out with a gold medal. They have received their World Championship title for the second year in a row now and received special recognition at the Kentucky State Capitol afterwards. Me and my fellow teammates gathered lots of footage and here it is. Thanks, Ella. Greenup County has been one of the top cheer programs in the country since the 80s. They have done very well. And now, on to Justin Poplin covering the FBLA Regional Competition. Thank you, Maria and Jeremy. On March 9th, Greenup County FBLA took a trip to Moorhead State University to compete in FBLA's Region 5 competition. We had many competitors place in their events and have some footage of the award ceremony. <laughs>
Those who placed at regionals will move on to the state competition, which will take place April 17th through the 19th at the Galt House in Louisville, Kentucky. Congratulations to all of our winners at the regional competition. Now back to you, Maria and Jeremy. Thank you, Justin. Our FBLA team did very well with several wins down in Moorhead. They really did. Miss Wellman, Miss Coldiron, Mr. Plummer, and Mr. Sturgill always do such a great job with the GC FBLA every year. Now, on to location for coverage on the Greenup County track team. The Greenup County track team is off and running this year, preparing for their best season yet. And now on to our guest, a sprinter and jumper for the Greenup County Musketeers, Brock Thomas. Thank you for joining us here, Brock. Thank you for having me. So with the new season underway, do you feel the Musketeers are prepared to take on the four big rivals? The Red Devils, the Rams, the Tomcats, and the Lions. We've worked really hard, really hard this season. And I, since track is such an individual sport, it's all about working on yourself. So I think we've worked on ourselves enough to say that we've outworked the rest of our rivals. Good to know. So what exactly have the Musketeers done to prepare for this season unlike last year? Well, we've cut down on the intensity of our practices and also cut down how many events that we do at each meet so that we're fresh enough for all the big meets like the regionals and the states that we run. Has track and green it become more popular? Like, do you all have more runners than before? Oh, definitely. I remember last year when we had like 30, maybe 40 runners on a good practice day. But now it seems like we have, what, close to 60, I think? Indeed. There are as many track runners this year on the distance team as there was on the entire team last year, hmm. which is rather surprising. Hmm. And lastly, thinking long term, how do you feel about the chances of more people making it to states this year? Oh, we definitely have a better chance of having a lot more people going to state. We have a lot of different athletes from a lot of different sports coming out to track. Like We have a bunch of football players, basketball players, soccer players, you name it. We've probably got at least three athletes from those sports. So that they can bring their athleticism from their sport to here, have a really good chance of making it to state. Well, that's good to hear. And thank you for coming out and talking with us, Brock. And now we have some shots of the recent track practice. <laughs> As we can see, the kids have been running hard, preparing to take the new season on head first. And now, back to the desk. The track team looks great this year. Indeed they do. And now on to a familiar face, Brock Thomas for the tennis team. Thank you, Jeremy. The tennis season at GCHS is in full swing, with matches against Rose Hill and East Carter already serving a bright season ahead. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. Thank you, Brock. The tennis team is showing some great potential. They really are. They're playing well against some of the best teams in the area. Now on to Elijah Brown on the baseball team. Thank you, Maria. Baseball is looking good out there so far. Let's see if they can keep improving and tallying up the dingers. Now here are some clips from their game against Ashland.
Thank you, Elisha. The baseball team is looking great this year. Indeed they are, and hopefully they can make it to the finals this year. Now on to Joseph Wright on the new TV sets in the cafeteria here at Greene County High School. Thank you, Jeremy. Greene County High School has continued to improve the school for students in the future. This time, school has gotten new TVs. These aren't for watching your favorite shows, however. They're actually for the news of GCHS TV. It'll help keep the students and staff up to date with the team and their stories. As you can see, these TVs were hung up all around the lunchroom. Thing was a good idea, so a student can watch our news stories and eat and relax at the same time. This will really help us get the stories around. Now back to you, Maria and Jeremy. Thank you, Joseph. The TVs will help spread the news to students. We now have Mark Aaron Burgess Jr. and Gary Wayne Klinger III on the Student Involvement Day. Thanks, Jeremy and Maria. This month's Student Involvement Day not only included the usual clubs that we participate in, but also included a student versus teachers basketball game. The game was super entertaining. Here's some clips we got of the game and some of the many games that were played. Personally, I think the game was a great addition to the Student Involvement Day. I agree. It was very fun to watch. Back to you, Jeremy and Maria. Thank you for that, Mark and Gary. Student Involvement Day has really helped clubs and teams grow and become better. It really has, and will continue to for years to come. And last but not least, we have Taylor Meadows and Emily French on a recent visitor. On March 24th, an author by the name Jeff Zittner came to talk to some of the classes to tell them about the new book he's beginning to write. We were able to get some footage of him talking about it. Some of his other books include The Wild Goodbye Days and The Separate King and The Ryan and Delilah Midnight Maintain. He has won numerous awards for his young adult fiction and was a finalist for the Southern Book Prize. He started his book career writing in 2012 and mostly writing in his books on the bus and on the way to in end of work. He also wrote some poetry and wrote some music when he isn't writing books. His new book is supposed to come out sometime in 2024 and is going to be titled Colton Gentry's Third Act. I'm 
own stories in the books. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, I love, I love being on the river near my house. I love kayaking. I'm, I'm not a canoeer like like uh, Cash is, but I love being on the river. So, so that's all me. That's all me. I love poetry, and so I had to, to put that into the book and, and make Cash love poetry. Um, in the Serpent King. One of the things the characters do, there's a railroad bridge through their town, and they sneak up onto this railroad bridge, and they graffiti it with their favorite poetry. And that was something me and my nerdy girlfriend in high school used to do. We used to sneak up onto this railroad bridge, and, and, and we, we'd get into trouble and make out and, and, and write poetry on this railroad bridge, because we thought we were being pretty cool. So uh, so yeah, lots of, lots of real experiences. Um, Realize with books, it's a little different from music. It's actually really unusual to have published many books before age 30. It's kind of the reverse of music. All right? Many, many big authors have published their first books well into their 40s, 50s, 60s. Toni Morrison. Y'all ever heard of Toni Morrison? Won the Nobel Prize for Literature, wrote uh, uh, Beloved, etc. She published her first book when she was 41 years old. I was only 36 at that point. So now I've got this form of art that young adults consume. I'm not too old to make it. Thank you, Taylor and Emily. And thank you for watching this episode of GCTV. And, and we'll, we'll see, see you next time here on, on the farm. farm.